Welcome back. And we're joined in studio by Miss Ursula Flores. She's director of home care uh, for the Center for Independence. Good morning. Good morning. How, How are, are you? Doing? I'm doing very well. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Welcome. First time. Uh, you have, you have a very uh, interesting background as it comes to this. Tell us a little bit about you. Where should I start? Um, so I've been at Centers for Independence for almost 15 years and started as a part-time administrative assistant and did some further education. And now I'm the director of their home care program. Our home care program has two different sides to it, like I like to say. One side is home care, so in the homes with people, helping them to be independent in their home, to keep them out of residential-like settings. And the other side is community services, keeping them engaged with everything that you can think of, from parenting classes to medication management, helping them with their finances, just everything that it would take to stay content and active in the community. So when, when you talk about this home care, what is, what is that demographic? I heard you mention everything from um, in-home care to... What, what's the group age range you work with? So everything, everything from infants to older adults. And that makes it very easy, right? So mm -hmm. we've got parents or family members that are taking care of younger children, aunts, grandparents, anything you can think of in between. Um, so what are some of the services that you offer in terms of this, this, home, this home care? Sure. So for the home care side, we do everything from like bathing and grooming, grocery shopping, helping someone get to and from appointments and communicating with, say, someone's case management team. On the community services side, like I'd referenced earlier, sometimes parenting gets difficult. And whether it's a court ordered class or something to help a parent really meet their high level functioning, we help them to be that higher level parent. Separately from that, we work with case managers to help people take their medication, take them on time, manage the daily living skills, maybe even help them to clean and organize and keep a steady pace in their life. So it's really exactly that, home and community-based services. You, you were talking about, <coughs> in terms of being the, 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 the best parent, um, is that like uh, parenting classes? Exactly. So parenting classes, we go through a full curriculum, helping someone to be able to manage the maybe competing priorities that might be present when you have more than one child or wanting to be that best parent that you can be. Um, one of the things that I that this whole um, physical health monitoring, what, mm -hmm. what does that look like? So physical health monitoring is more of, say, for example, you might have a health concern that might require that you take medication, get regular blood draws, or go and see a doctor regularly. It might be even more complex, like going and having some regular testing or some type of maybe blood transfusion or maybe kidney monitoring. Everything in between is pretty much what we help to assist with. I think a lot of times <clears throat> people don't, don't always, they, they might be resistant to taking the medication uh, the inconsistency in taking their medication, um, but to get them on a consistent schedule is a better health outcome, right? Absolutely, especially in a partnership. So when I say partnership, that maybe includes our nurse as staffing individuals to help to monitor those medications and maybe, maybe a staff member to come into their home, provide them with a med tray or their bubble packs, maybe prepackaged medications, make sure they're taking it and not just taking it without any understanding of what the effects are. We want to make sure that someone has a full belly, right? Like back in the day, you're going to take this medicine, make sure you've eaten breakfast, and making sure that everything around that is comfortable and safe. <coughs> you know, I just thought about what old folks say, yeah, that toe up my stomach, exactly. right? You take an aspirin or you take something that is a little bit corrosive when it comes to that stomach lining. Why, why then is it important for these type of services to be available? I don't know if I'm asking that question correctly. Let me try. Okay. So to make it easy, I feel like we are all very well equipped to do certain things to help us function in the community. But sometimes that's not very easy. We go to things like Google for the younger generation or to our doctor's office for the older generation, or we're just winging it. And that's not so easy sometimes. It's helpful to have some guidance. And in some instances, it might be court ordered. It very well might be just something that helps someone have a better quality of life. And that's what we're here to do. How do we, how do we encourage people? Because a lot of times, <clears throat> 
people could be struggling, and they said 50% of the solution is first realizing that you have the problem. How do you <clears throat> create an environment where people will be willing to step forward to accept this type of service? I think the other side of that is how do we allow and make people feel comfortable to ask for help? I think that in comfortable, safe conversations, that's something that is very easy to do. But for those curious folks, it's really easy to pick up a phone, ask a couple questions and say, hey, I'm having a problem with this. What can you guys do for me? It's similar like going out and finding the right customer service in a professional setting. But asking for help, I think, is something that we've not become so good at doing. How has your background in terms of um, trauma-informed care helped you in this position? Sure. So trauma-informed care training is something that I've been familiar with for about the last six or seven years. And it started at the organization that trained us as facilitators or trainers. Being able to ask someone what happened to you instead of why are you doing that or why are you behaving like that is something that's extremely important because we're changing the narrative. We're allowing for people to feel more comfortable sharing the problems that they've experienced, experienced or the challenges that they've had, which have set the tone for their behaviors. You know, one of the challenges for uh, for <clears throat> seniors a lot of times is this loss of independence. You know, I could do, I could do, I can do. And because of just, you know, the process of aging, there's certain things that uh, <clears throat> I might be limited in my ability to do. How do you help me overcome that to say, you know, okay, you lost a little bit of independence, but it, this will – how do you make that transition from what you were used to in terms of your independence to this new level of independence? Well, the best, the best response to that is to meet people where they are at. When you no longer have the physical ability to do something the way that you could have done it, you want to tell somebody how to do it the way you want it done. And if it's up to those medical standards, of course, and up to their expectations, we're happy to do it and provide that service to them. What attracted you to this uh, type of work? Well, a big part for me is that the agency that I work at is about a mile away from the home that I grew up in. And as I've told many people from all different places in my life, if I would have known that services like that were available to me and my family growing up as a child, those are some of the things that we would have taken advantage of. So it's a, a very well-kept secret. And unfortunately, being a secret, not many people know about it. So thanks for having me here today. But also, it really pulls at my heartstrings. We can go out and work anywhere that we want, and I'm sure for you, your desire is being able to touch people's heart through radio. Mine is being able to help people to stay safe and stay happy in the home and the community that they serve and that they live in. How how can, um, do you take referrals, or are people referred to you, or is it general public inquiry? How would people be uh, able to take advantage of the, the home care services that you provide their Center for Independence? Great question. All of that. All of the above. So you can call and ask some questions yourself or for your loved one or for maybe one of your friends or your physician, your doctor can reach out and ask a couple questions about how to provide those services to their patient. The Is there a cost? Yes. So there is a cost. Everything's not free 99, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a cost and we accept majority of insurances and we also accept private pay. What about in terms of what if I wanted to do this kind of work? I wanted to be a caregiver. What could I do in order to get either necessary training or to be hired? How, how could I do that? What's that process? Well, first off, I'd be very excited to have you be on our team. But what you would do is reach out, make a phone call, or go ahead and look at our website at mcfi.net, and you'll see job postings for all of our over 30 programs. And it's as simple as filling out an application, going through the hiring process. We pre-screen every individual, provide them with the appropriate training, and help them and set them up for success in the community. Well, so what if uh, if I'm a relative and I want to be a trained uh, caregiver, would mm -hmm. I be eligible? Absolutely. What you would need to do is make sure that, of course, your family member or your relative is content with you providing services. And after completing the job application and going through the hiring process, we would train you to provide those specific services for your family member. Um, I'm sure that Center for Independence is not exempt from a lot of the issues we're dealing with around employment. 
So are you looking for people at this point? Absolutely. We are not foreign to those problems that a lot of our community businesses are struggling from. So definitely looking for caregivers, community service providers. And we hire individuals that may not have completed that high school or GED and those individuals that are all the way up to master's degree. The, it sounds like the training is, is, is uh, exhausted training. No, I wouldn't say so. So for a caregiver, we'll put it in the context of being able to have those one-to-one training services, right? Those one-to-one training services might be something that someone is familiar with because they've already been providing services to that family member or close friend. So we would ensure that they're doing them appropriately, and our nurse would provide that oversight. For some of the other roles, there might be a 20 to 40 hour training that can be completed in the office, and a lot of it is either hands-on or virtual training. What are, if you just, what would you be looking for? What would, if there's such a thing as the ideal candidate, what would be uh, a good candidate to do this type of work? I think in the first place, you need to be willing to care for people willing to help to make a positive difference in someone's life. And that could be very basic for some, but a challenge for others. And what we want to do is just make sure that you are that person. We go through screening process like all other jobs do, but for us, we're focused on the person and we're focused on your ability to get them to that next step in life. So let's talk about why that that screening process is so important. Sure. Because, uh, you know, elder abuse is, is real. I mean, people... Mm-hmm. So, how to why is that screening process so important i guess i don't need to sure so for us it's our values our organization has three values and People can't see me through the radio show, but you can. It's something that we have engraved in every day and every work that we do. Understanding people, working together, and leading success. So we want to understand the person behind the problem or behind the service that we're providing. We want to work together with them and any other member of their treatment team, including their family, to lead success, not just for the person and not just for our workplace, but as a community, because that's what it takes to be successful. I think sometimes people don't understand, even though you, you're being financially compensated, for many it is just the love of providing service, right? Absolutely. Pulls at the heartstrings. That's why we're here. Well, again, if folks are interested either in um, taking advantage of the home care services or wanting to apply uh, for a position, uh, what can they do? They can call 414 290 0050. That is our MCFI home care line. Otherwise, go on our website at www.mcfi.net. You, um, <laughs> no, I'm looking because, first of all, I mean, just, just incredible presence. Um, anything you want to leave us with? I would say thank you very much for this opportunity. I know that you guys have all different types of diverse and caring individuals that come on the show, but I think especially to be in the heart of the community that we serve, it's an honor and it's a privilege to be able to talk about something that I enjoy doing and that so many of our staff really dedicate their heart and time to. Well, it's been a real benefit for me because I have uh, had the opportunity to talk to many in your organization and um, <clears throat> it is the, the 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 message is consistent, which means that um, that that there is a uh, attitude, and I want to if I, if I may use this term corporate attitude, in terms of providing services to the community, and and again you're right, it is probably one of the best kept secrets in our community. For many years, I used to drive by there, and I go, well, I wonder what they do in there, you know? And uh, uh, this gig has really helped me to actually just uh, starting off, uh, starting with, with Al Hill, and, and, and really made me aware of the work that you all do there. So, man, I really appreciate you all. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Al is my diversity dad, and he'd tell you I'm one of his daughters. Love him to death. And he and I have been working together on our diversity committee for quite a long time. So, such a privilege. I know. Ms. Ursula Flores, again, uh, she is the director of home care at the Center for Independence. I want to thank you for spending a few moments with us. Again, if folks are interested in learning more about the Center for Independence, they can call. 
414-290-0050 or go to our website at www.mcfi.net. I want to thank you. Continue the good work. Thank you. Hope to see you again. Absolutely. Have a great day. Thank you. You're listening to Community Voice. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. 